with these three trigonometric ratios derived, we start to see that this is not really about triangles but rather a point on a circle. On a sphere, it is called translateration. But if we simplify it to the triangle itself, for example, and draw a nice hook for observation, it's like looking at something above your eye level. So let's say there is a tree. You can observe the height of the tree by looking straight at it and then looking at the top of the tree. This measures the distance and the height. We call this the triangulation. But let's go all the way back to this question and this diagram. At the start of the previous video, I asked the question that if two things are going around a circle, how do we measure the distance? From the ancient study of the night sky, they observed that the Earth's axis points to the North Star, and the shape of the Earth is a sphere. With this, if they could measure the distance of a celestial object, they could probably determine the circumference of the Earth. And if they could measure the circumference of the Earth, then they can navigate the Earth. Eratosthenes is famous for measuring the circumference of a sphere using logical reasoning. Knowing that the sun shines directly inside a well in Syene, known today as Aswan, once a day during the summer solstice, he stuck a stick on the ground to measure the angle of shadow that the stick casts from the sun's ray. Using this model, he calculated the circumference of the circle. In this experiment, you can say he used trigonometry and geometry to pinpoint the two cities on the earth and like a slice of pizza, he used that one slide to calculate the entire circumference of a circle. With this model and our little knowledge on geometry, Let's find out about the geometric interpretation of the trigonometric ratios and their reciprocals. I have a unit circle with a radius of 1 and a triangle that touches the point. So if we want to solve for the sine, we can use the derivation that we did that sine is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. But here, since the hypotenuse is equal to the radius which is equal to 1, we can replace the hypotenuse with 1 and so we have the sine is equal to opposite. We can use the same method for the cosine. When we derived the cosine, we saw that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And since we know hypotenuse is already 1, the radius, we can replace the adjacent with cosine. And now we have derived the cosine and the sine, we can derive the tangent. In geometry, when two triangles share the same internal angles, they are known as similar triangles. Which means that whatever applies to the smaller triangle happens to the bigger triangles. And so, since we don't know the length of the tangent line, let's replace it with h for now to do some calculation. So, we know that the side is h for the sine and um, radius will be cosine. And so, we can derive the bigger triangle to be h over 1 and the smaller triangles to be sine over cosine. And so, we have that h is equal to sine over cosine. And we know that h is the tangent of the triangle. Now we have this table for the geometric interpretation of the trigonometric ratios. When we observe this diagram, we see that there is a secant. A secant is a line that passes through a circle. We can derive the secant by using adjacent over hypotenuse. For the smaller triangle, it will be 1 divided by cosine. But for the bigger triangle, the same derivation, derivation will be secant divided by 1. And since we're solving for secant, we know that the secant is equal to 1 divided by cosine which looks like a multiplicative inverse, or in other words, the reciprocal of cosine. A reciprocal simply means that when two numbers are multiplied together, they are equal to 1. So that means that when we invert the tangent line geometrically, we will be able to find the other reciprocals that is left. So these will be the calculation if you derive it by yourself. In spherical geometry, the concept of trigonometry is known as trilateration. It is used to pinpoint exactly where someone is on a map or somewhere. That is how our GPS works. The problem is that the Earth is not a 2D, it's a 3D. So just drawing a triangle wouldn't work. The Earth is cross-sectioned into parallels of latitude and meridians of longitude. But that wouldn't be able to help us pinpoint exactly the location, so we need time and altitude. Our satellite emits a signal that shows us exactly where we are on a certain map. The first satellite puts you on a sphere, then the second satellite puts you on a certain area. Third will make sure it knows where you are on the east-west and the fourth exactly where you are. 
let's say you live on a 2D environment and something is missing or you are missing yourself and you're given this information that you are 29 kilometers away and someone says you are 19 kilometers in somewhere it puts you in a sphere and then somebody helps you and decides to tell you exactly where this thing is hiding so he says 10 meters inside the circle that you are in you're able to pinpoint exactly where you are using system of equation or just mapping out exactly where you are you are able to tell where your spot is that is how the gps works but the GPS need a fourth signal to tell your altitude and exactly the spot where you're in. Trilateration deals with sphere, but another part of trigonometry that it's used mainly is the triangulation, which is used by land surveyors or scientists and physicists alike. It, it uses the trigonometric ratio, and they are used to measure the length and height of an object. An example would be someone trying to measure the height of a tree. The person will measure the distance they walked and also the height or angle that they have between the object. Another way of using this is a lens surveyor using a theodolite to measure how tall a mountain is in a rocky place or surveying a land that an infrastructure can be built on. One that astrologers and physicists use the most is measuring the star using parallaxon. But since these measurements use triangles, building a data will help us be able to solve for them easily. In geometry, there are two triangles that we usually talk about, which is the 45, 45, 90 degrees angle and the 30, 60, 90 degrees angle. We say they are special because they have a certain pattern that they follow and it makes it easier to solve when doing calculations. We will go ahead and prove these triangles geometrically and then solve for the trigonometric ratio of the sides. Let's say that I have a square with the length and height of 1. Now we notice that the edge forms a 90 degrees angle. So we have four of the corners. So four times 90 degrees, which gives us 360 degrees angle. Now let us fold this square into two, making sure that one vertex touches another vertex on the edge. Now what we notice is that the 90 degrees has been split evenly. So instead of 90, we divide it by two and we get 45 degrees angle. This gives us a 90-45-45 degrees angle. Now that we know that two sides of the triangle are one, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the unknown side. By using the c square equals to 1 square plus 1 square, 1 square plus 1 square is equal to 2. So if we take the square root, we get, we get c is equal to square root of 2. Let us imagine that this triangle is a protractor trying to measure the height of a bamboo tree. So we can find the trigonometric table by first labeling the triangle. The and then using the trigonometric ratio, we can solve the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Sine we know is opposite of our hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent to our hypotenuse. And tangent is sine over cosine. Now that we've solved the 90, 45 degrees angle, the 90 degrees angle will be like following the circle to a 90 degrees angle. Well, we see that as we keep going, the 90 degrees angle approaches the unit circle one. However, the hypotenuse keeps on going forever and ever into infinity. So in order to find the cosine, when we use adjacent of our hypotenuse, since the hypotenuse is infinity, it goes to zero. And for the tangent, sine is one and cosine is zero. And one divided by zero is undefined. Now that we've solved the trigonometric ratio for our first triangle, let's rearrange the table a little bit and put the square root at the bottom on top. For a 30, 60, 90 degrees angle, we have the same square here. However, we're going to fold it in a different way. We're first going to split it into two so that we split the square into two. And then now that we split it into two, we can fold the vertex of the, the bottom 90 degrees to the top of the crease that we made to make an equilateral triangle. Now that we have an equilateral triangle, let's label the unit circle that we knew of as A. Now we know that it's an equilateral triangle and the 30, 30 degrees angle makes a 60 degrees angle. We have two A's on the side of the triangle, so that makes it a 2A. Now all that is left is to find the missing side on the triangle of interest. 
So by using the Pythagorean theorem, we'll be able to find it as x equal to a square root of 3. This is the pattern that every 30, 60, 90 degrees triangle will follow. But since we are using the unit, let us use 1 to be our unit. So a is equal to 1. And since we know that hypotenuse is 2a, it will be 2. And then the short side will be the square root of 3, because 1 times the square root of 3 is always 3. Now we can find the trigonometric ratio by labeling, first labeling the triangle. And then we can add angles that we don't know into our trigonometric table and solve for it. For sine, the opposite is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. For cosine, we get the adjacent being the square root of 3 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2. And for tangent, it's sine divided by cosine. And when we do that, we get 1 divided by the square root of 3. But since we don't want the square root of 3 to stay at the bottom, we do a conjugation and we get the square root of 3 divided by 3. Since the 60 degrees is complementary to the 30 degrees angle, the sine and the cosine are going to flip. So the cosine will become the sine for the 60 degrees and the sine will become the cosine for the 60 degrees angle. However, the tangent will also be the sine over cosine which we will get the square root of 3 divided by 1. These are the trigonometric ratio for the two special triangles. Can you find the trigonometric ratio for the zero degree angle?